Well, once again, the United States stands at the brink of a painful and unnecessary economic catastrophe because of the Republican Party. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, so I have several clips to play, but here's the context. In about six days, the United States government will shut down unless something changes, thanks exclusively to the chaos, stupidity, and dysfunction of House Republicans. And in response to that, six days away from a government shutdown, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, sent everybody home for the weekend, even though we're days away from this event, because his initial attempts to try to cobble together some sort of budget proposal in his own party crumbled, okay? Then, the day after that, the day after he sent everybody home for the weekend, we found out that the United States is on the brink of losing its perfect credit score. And if that happens, the American taxpayer will accrue, basically it will cost the American taxpayer hundreds of billions of dollars in additional borrowing fees, when the United States government inevitably has to borrow more money to pay its debts. Just an absolute catastrophe, thanks exclusively to the Republican Party. Let's play the first clip, which kind of recaps the situation in terms of its own dysfunction. Right now, the federal government is actively preparing for the very real possibility of a government shutdown. And with just one week left to avert a crisis, lawmakers went home yesterday for a long weekend after the new speaker, Mike Johnson, had to cancel votes on two funding bills. One House Republican told NBC News the caucus is ungovernable. Another put it more pointedly. I don't think the Lord Jesus himself could manage this group. I, I don't even know what you say to that. There's nothing more that needs to be said. The Republican Party is objectively a shit show and a clown show all in one. They are factually, objectively inferior to the Democratic Party in literally every way. And now... That inferiority is going to manifest itself in a way that's going to hurt the domestic and potentially global economy. Here's what happened. Moody's just sent a warning the day after Mike Johnson sent everybody home for the weekend, throwing his hands up in defeat, that your last AAA credit rating is at risk. Okay, Moody suggested on Friday that it didn't see an immediate path for the United States to solve its fiscal predicament. In the context of higher interest rates, without effective fiscal policy measures to either reduce government spending or increase revenues, Moody's expects the U.S. fiscal deficits will remain very large, significantly weakening debt affordability, Moody said in a statement. Continued political polarization within the U.S. Congress raises the risk that successive governments will not be able to reach consensus on a fiscal plan to slow the decline in debt affordability. Gov Republicans who have – as a remember – as a reminder, rather, Donald Trump added 25% of the U.S. national debt in four years after promising to wipe it out. And he also slashed taxes in the 2017 uh, Trump tax cuts, okay? So if you're going to add increased government spending, which seems inevitable, then you also need to increase taxes, particularly on the rich, which is what President Biden wants to do. Uh, Democrats want to do. Republicans oppose it. So Republicans want to spend like hell, like they always do. They are fiscally irresponsible, and they don't want to increase revenues at the same time. And that, combined with their polarization, their brinkmanship, has put the United States in this situation. Now, in response to this, Mike Johnson, of course, tried to pass the blame. Moody's investor service downgrade of the U.S. credit rating is the latest example of the failure of President Biden and Democrats' reckless spending agenda. Okay, But again, that's not what Moody said. Moody said, listen, you either need to reduce spending, which Republicans don't do, or you need to increase taxes, which Republicans constantly oppose. And by the way, the political polarization is going to – decreases confidence, rather, that people will be able to get this under control. Now, again – their people pointed this out in response to Mike Johnson. Then this is from a CNN article. A spokesperson for Johnson did not immediately respond to CNN's quest for comment on Moody's announcement. In Moody's view, such political polarization is likely to continue. As a result, political co building political consensus around a comprehensive, credible multi-year plan to arrest and reverse widening fiscal deficits through measures that would increase revenue uh, or reform entitlement uh, appear spending appears to be extremely difficult. The resulting... A uh, ouster of Kevin McCarthy, the first time in history a speaker was given the boot, and Congress's inability to cement a replacement for weeks were also included in Moody's negative sentiment about the government's vulnerabilities. That's especially crucial when it comes to the ability to exercise fiscal responsibility, avoid another looming shutdown, and work in a bipartisan manner to work on a reasonable budget. That's exclusively the fault of the Republican Party. 
Okay, and as a reminder, Kevin McCarthy, the former speaker, made a deal with President Biden back in May that would have averted all of this. The Republican Party made a deal with the Democrats, and then the Republican Party reneged on that deal because they wanted more and they wanted to hurt the president politically. That is 100 percent their fault. The problem is we're now all going to suffer the consequences. Um, now, this is also from um, – this is also from Reuters kind of analyzing this. Analysts said the move shows the depth of harm caused to the United States by repeated rounds of contentious debate over the debt ceiling, right? Because this is also factoring in not just the government shutdown, but the issue with the debt ceiling, which was at least resolved until 2025, January 2025. It was resolved in May. Fitch said repeated political standoffs and last-minute resolutions over the debt limit have eroded confidence in fiscal manage it, management. Fitch is another credit agency, which initially the United States, I think, had three AAA uh, credit uh, scores from like Fitch, Standards & Poor's, and Moody's. Okay, We lost Standards & Poor's in 2011 when President Obama was in office because of Republicans dicking around with him about the debt ceiling. They did what they attempted to do with Biden. They attempted to extort President Obama uh, in exchange for these egregious, enormous concessions that they couldn't get during regular budget negotiation. And as a result, our credit score was downgraded and American taxpayers accrued hundreds of billions of dollars in additional borrowing fees. So that happened 12 years ago, and that was also the fault of Republicans. This is a pattern, okay, where they tried to extort a Democratic president for concessions they couldn't otherwise get. Absolutely embarrassing. Um, yeah, Moody's is uh, the only one of the three major credit rating agencies to assign the United States an outstanding rating of AAA. Standards and Poor's downgraded in 2011. And in August, Fitch ratings knocked America's credit rating down after the most recent debt ceiling debate. There you go. I mean, it's just absolutely disgraceful. Um, now, I want to play this clip here, which again, is from a Republican, Thomas Massey of Kentucky, in which he kind of sets the stage for the dilemma that Mike Johnson finds himself in. Because again, House Democrats have their act together, Senate Democrats have their act together, and even Senate Republicans who want to work for the most part in a bipartisan way to resolve this issue. This is exclusively because of his party in one chamber of Congress. What, what, John, what if Johnson does what McCarthy did, which is rely on Democrats to pass a CR? What kind of response would he get from the conference? Well, I think there's a honeymoon period here. I'm not sure how long it lasts, maybe 30 days with the with what's going on on the floor today. I think that indicates the honeymoon might be shorter than we thought. And um, every time the CR expires, the speaker's putting his head in the lion's mouth. There you go. Thomas Massey, who, by the way, is one of the most far right Republicans in Congress. He's like, Mike Johnson's in a tough position. And I don't know how any speaker couldn't because, again, bipartisanship is punished by the Republican Party. There's no way to do it other than to work bipartisanly with Democrats, but you're going to be punished by your own chamber if you do so, in which case you need to be protected by Democrats and enough members of your own party to avoid being ousted. And that means you have to work with Democrats in good faith. Democrats are not obligated to protect Republican speakers unless Republican speakers prove that they're honest, good faith actors. They don't have to give the farm away, but they must. They are obligated if they need Democrats to give Democrats things in exchange. If the shoe were on the other foot, that's what Republicans would argue. And Democrats are not obligated to operate at a different political standard. Democrats, if Republicans need Democrat protection, they have to give crucial concessions to Democrats, and Democrats are right to demand that. Now, in response to all this, um, I'll just remind you of what Republicans have been doing with their time in you know, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. This is what the House GOP has us voting on tonight, and this was on November 7th. Reducing the salary of the National Highway Transportation Administration head to $1. Reducing the Deputy Secretary of Transportation to $1. Reducing the salary of the Assistant Secretary for Housing to $1. Things that, by the way, will never pass you know, the Senate and therefore become law. It's just a useless political gesture to try to hurt members of the Biden administration, which they know won't go anywhere. He also pointed this out in the night. This is Congressman Ted Lieu again. The government shuts down in eight days, which hurts our economy and harms our national security. What's the House GOP having us vote on Thursday morning? Reduce the salary of the White House press secretary to $1. Republicans are not serious people. That's what they've been doing with their time on, on the floor. Um, now, here's where it gets interesting. Shortly after this news dropped about the United States credit score being in danger, Jake Sherman of Punchbowl News, uh, he announced, House Republicans are doing a two-step laddered continuing resolution. This was an idea from HFC, who I'm not sure who that is. Deadlines are January 19th and February 2nd. 
Johnson says, I wasn't the architect of the mess we're in. I guess he's trying to say, listen, I'm just trying to get us out of it. Please don't blame me. And apparently, it would be for the same spending levels, okay? Um, so there would be no spending cuts, which is what Republicans want. By the way, this is a clean CR, nothing more, nothing less. This is what McCarthy got booted for, what Johnson is proposing. Again, MAGA Republicans are furious. Marjorie Taylor Greene in particular says, I voted no to both CRs before, and I'm voting no to this clean CR. We need to finish a, a, pro, a probes, excuse me, and the Senate needs to do their job. No money to Ukraine, close the border, stop the weaponized government, impeach Biden, Mayorkas, Ray, Garland, and Graves. No concessions whatsoever. They who control one chamber of one branch of government are trying to be the tail that wags the dog. Again, I have no sympathy for the Republicans. This is exclusively because of their stupidity, their incompetence, their moral inferiority. They're just awful in ways that Democrats are simply not. And if they want to do what's right for their constituents, conservative and progressive, and just the country as a whole— some of them are going to have to work bipartisanly in good faith with Democrats to avoid this. But if Johnson does that, he runs the risk of being removed. So I, again, he's going to have to make a pretty compelling case to Democrats. I don't see unless for some reason President Biden decides to pressure his party to give you know, Johnson and, and House Republicans everything they want. I don't know. I, I hope to God Biden doesn't do that. I hope that the president remains resolute and says, no, no, no. I negotiated with you in good faith. Uh, I made the deal with the Republican Party back in May. We made these accommodations in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. I'm not moving anymore. I've done my part. You will come to me. I hope that's the posture President Biden takes. And the rest of us, you and I and everybody else, Democratic surrogates in the media, make the case that this is objectively 100 percent the fault of the Republican Party, whatever may come. Let me know what you think in the comments.